it's hard when you're fighting for the world heavyweight title. It's a bit different context to someone coming up to you in the bar and someone who's not relevant. These two guys know in a few months when they've done that, they've got to go and have a fight and they're fighting for the world title. And um, there's a little bit of jostling there, a little bit of body language and mind games going on. And if someone's saying, that you can't intimidate me, you come over to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and do that. It's very hard to, to keep your call. But I think Joshua, did, he did it in a way where he did keep his call. I know he stood up, but he was he done it in a menacing, intimidating way. And fair play to the while, he didn't, he didn't back down he either. Down. So it's the nature and part and parcel of being a heavyweight boxer fighting for the world title. You're going you're gonna to get a bit of uh, testosterone pumping, aren't you? Yes, 100. Um, so yeah, Danny Whitaker, how was that fight? Yeah, that was the fight in the matchroom garden. It was an open atmosphere. Really good, really good atmosphere. Different. Load of load, really good. The third, that was my third fight, and um, and I, was that round two knockout? I think it was. Yeah, round two, one one minute fifty Overhand seconds right. left. That yeah. was good. Um, oh. Really local to me, but 10, 15 minutes away in Brentwood. So, yeah, really, really good, good event, and a once in a lifetime place to box. You know. Yeah, it looked good. Really good. You see the garden before; it's all done up, and then you see all the stuff in it for the arena. And it looks it looks amazing. It looks like a, a proper proper stadium sort of vibe. So it was really good. You got Gabriel in Guema. Yeah, he was tough. He was a Spanish heavyweight champion, but it was also tough because I broke my hand in the changing room right. and cut my eye in the first thirty seconds. Oh, but it would have been a tough test anyway. Yeah. Probably something I didn't need at that stage How of my you career. Fight with a broken hand. I was trying to land my. If you look at that fight back, I'm trying to wing the shots over the top yeah. I couldn't really land on these this knuckle I split my splintered my metacarpal bone here okay. and it was an overuse injury I really felt it before the fight but I cracked it even more during the warm up on the pads so looking back now I could have handled it better jabbed a bit more but mm -hmm. obviously I spoke to you about feeling tense feeling anxious and that plays a big role and Probably a fight I didn't need at that stage of my career, being my fifth fight. Mm -hmm. Sold two and a half thousand tickets at Ali Pali. Someone like a Michael Rising or Torero would have been a good fit for that for that fight. But it's all experience in the bank. And looking back now, long term, it's put me in a better position because I've been in in a in a situation of high pressure where things aren't going my way, you know. And I still yeah. won every round. I mean, that's uh, six six rounds, wasn't it? Yeah. You did on that one. That's yep. one of your longest fights. Yeah, that was my second longest fight behind the Armstrong fight, which went seven rounds. How important is it to get that them them rounds in? Is it, obviously, you want to make a statement, and you've actually you know come out, especially you know the last fight, um, you know Babic, thirty six yeah. seconds. Boy, I was watching that. Thirty six. Just sitting there watching that. Bosh, 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 bosh. Done and him. then when he come up, it was a funny dance, and it was yeah. like, it's all over me. Well, the ref done very well to yeah. stop that fight, but you need to get rounds under your belt. Yeah. But if you can get them out of there, it's a bonus. But in long term thinking mm -hmm. getting rounds in the belt under the belt is very very important and someone who I'm contracted to fight next who we've organised with is Rudenko and he's he's proven yes. at the top level to uh, to get rounds in he thought Zili Zang couldn't stop him Huey Fury couldn't stop him Povetkin couldn't stop him mm -hmm. so some very very Are big names are you looking names. to make a statement 24th of August well, the thing is now the 24th of August fight is off because Jack Catchall, the main event, has broke his ribs. Okay. So we're just in the process of reorganising that fight for okay. in the next month or two. Rudenko's not a joke. No, he's not a joke 44 at all. 44 fights, 36 wins. My most experienced opponent so far. 22 knockouts. Yeah. You know, I only lost seven, and that's not a lot compared to how many And the people that he's today. lost to are the... Huey Furies, Alexander Povetkins, Jared Anderson, who's the hottest prospect in heavyweight boxing right now. So... It would be a. I'm not so much looking to make a statement. I'm just looking to win. Winning is all that matters. And if I get ten rounds under my belt fighting him, so be it. That's what I need. What do you think of Huey Fury? I mean, he's like that that heavyweight that you know he was very young coming on the heavyweight scene, and then you know his dad Peter you know said that he had a bit of acne, and then there was yeah. certain things troubling him. Then he took that little, I think he took a loss and then he, he disappeared for a couple of years. Now he's coming back like, you know. Huey Fury is a, is a really good fighter. Technically very good. Awkward. Big man, six foot six. I sparred him when I first turned professional. Does he have power? Yes, yes, he does. It doesn't look like he, he has that finishing power. Yeah, he's not, not maybe not the power of a Daniel Dubois or Anthony Joshua, but any man over 14 stone four, which is the cruiserweight limit, can seriously punch and mm. uh, it's a big unit. Lots of experience, great coach in Peter Fury. And um, he's still a force to be reckoned with. 
and um, it's going to be interesting to see how he comes back. Very nice man as well. He looked after me when I came for sparring in Congleton, it's called, near Manchester. Is and there a difference in levels between when sparring Tyson Fury and Huey Fury? Yeah, yeah. Tyson Fury is obviously mixed at the elite, elite top level, but Huey Fury is fought Joe Parker, Povetkin. I think he drew with Povetkin, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I remember, was that Michael Hunter? But he still fought at the top level, but yeah, Tyson Fury is the the top one, top two, top three guys in, in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, also, you've been uh, tipped um, top ten in UK. Yeah, I'm number nine now. Yeah. I looked yesterday, <laughs> so I'll keep keeping an eye on it. But listen, it's just a nice little thing to be yeah. to be in that in their names. So I'm not saying I'm, I'm I'm an amazing fighter, but it's a great little achievement to be in the top ten in the UK. So Johnny, let's talk about some fight predictions. You got AJ versus Triple D. You know, from where I'm sitting as an amateur. Looking, I'm thinking AJ is the top dog. He's got all the experience behind him. He's been for world title fights already. He looks athletically there. And I'm looking at Triple D, where, you know, I think Joe Joyce beat him, didn't he? Yeah, he did yeah. back in a few years back. Yeah, now. and 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 people said he quit. Um, but obviously you've got to say Triple D is quite young. He's yeah. only a year older than me. Yeah, he's 26. And he's a young, hungry lion. And he can whack. He can seriously yeah, punch. with him. He's the hardest person I've ever been punched by. Really? Ever. And his jab is like a right hand when it hits you. Really? It is unbelievable power. He punches like an absolute horse. He's a massive, massive puncher. Really nice guy as well when you see him outside of the ring. Mm. But, yeah, I too would favour Joshua because of the experience of the level he's at. But... Dubois fought Usyk now, and a lot of people thought Dubois beat Usyk with that body shot. Yeah. I think it was a when I looked at it initially, I thought what a great shot. But he's mixed it. He's on a good run. He's beat Jarrell Miller. He, he's beat Philip Hergovich, who I was sparring in Texas, who was probably the most technically gifted fighter I've ever been in with. What does that mean? Technically gifted. gifted. The punch repertoire, where he throws his shots from, his ability to read his opponent, the footwork, um, the skill in the mind, and knowing. Knowing how to break people down, he was he was fantastic, and I just think I spoke to him after the fight, and he uh, overtrained and he was ill in the build up to that fight because I really expected him to do a good job against Daniel Dubois. Yeah. As hard as Daniel Dubois hits, the way he was sparring Djokovic, it looked unbelievable. But probably peaked a bit too soon. That was about five weeks out, four weeks out. But coming back to Dubois and AJ, I would favour AJ. But as Ben Davis and AJ's coach has said, this is heavyweight boxing and the Bark and seriously whack and he's proved in his metal. I know a lot of people said he quit against uh, Joe Joyce, but I'd like to see a lot of people deal with a broken eye socket and their eyeball rolling about in their head and see how they how they would feel. But um, what would you do in that situation? Do you don't know? Never been there. Would you um, lose on your shield, as they say, or you'd like to think you would, but you've got a great corner team. I don't think his corner team are giving him any help. I would communicate to the corner that. My eye socket's gone, I've broken it. And they do ask me, I know what Mark to do, say, can you go on? Can you carry on? I'll give you one more round. And I'd like to think in my heart that I could say, yeah, I'll go on one more round. But until I've been in that situation, I don't know. And um, Dubois could have been like that. For, I think he could have been like that from round three, round four. His eye was getting smashed and Joe Joyce has got a brilliant jab. Oh, sparred loads of times with him. <laughs> but Dubois proven his metal, fighting Jerome Miller, come through a corner there. Dubois, when he fought Hergovic, what, round one, round two, was getting absolutely smashed with right hands and just came through and came through and bludgeoned Hergovic in the end. So he's proven his metal and it's not going to be an easy night's work for Joshua. It's going to be a great fight. We had uh, Spencer Fear on here a few yes, weeks ago. good man. And he said to me that I seen Joshua in camp. Joshua looks like he's just refining yeah. what he needs to do. And Triple D's had a new coach come on board, which is trying to strip him back and try and get him ready and, it, and he thinks it's a, a little bit too soon. Who? Um, triple D. For Triple D. Yeah. But the thing is, he's fought, he probably, I, I, I agree that Joshua is the favourite, but he's mixed with the top guys. He's, Usyk's the best in the division. And he's fought, he's fought Usyk and he's fought Jarrell Miller. He's fought um, Joe Joyce now, albeit a loss, and fought Ergovic. Where else is there to go? And then if you get a shot at the world title, you might as well have a go again. How does Triple D win? against AJ Joshua obviously has got the history of people the stigma around him of oh he can't take a punch obviously you're a heavyweight you get hit by one of these elite guys you're going to feel it it's, I don't think it's that but it will be playing on his mind that Dubois is a massive puncher 
He's just got to bring the fight to Anthony Joshua. He's got to take a few risks in a in an educated way, and 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 be the aggressor in the fight, not sit back too much. And Dubois got brilliant feet. He comes in a few inches at, in range, few inches out, and he's very good at counter right hands. Mm -hmm. If you just lean in a bit much, a bit too much over your front foot, he will sting you with that backhand. And it never drops me, but it will it will shake you to your boots if it hits you.